Hey everybody, welcome back to Anderson's TV and I've got a very special guest with me today. I've got Lee Harris, uh, who uh, we're going we're gonna to deep dive into the murky origins <laughs> of one of the greatest bands of all time. And we're going to, you know, talk about our shared love of their music. Um, but yes, Pink Floyd, who, who doesn't like and in some way hasn't been inspired or influenced by the music that they made? Um, it's it was my gateway into guitar sure um lee very kindly contacted me after um i was lucky enough to meet a guitar player called tim rennick who was the sort of the, the backup guitar player yeah. in the band that pink floyd had put together during the 80s to do this incredible incredible gig uh that was recorded on the delicate sound of thunder yeah and that was my that was my introduction to Pink Floyd. I think right. I was 15 or 16 or something like that. And I was playing guitar a little bit, but early days then. Same here. Yeah. 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 So, and it blew yeah. my mind. Yeah. But for Pink Floyd fans, they'll know really that that kind of delicate sound of thunder line up and the sound and the visual, that was quite a departure from, from where they'd been in the 70s. Mm. So I, you know, I, but I get, went through, it's like a greatest hits, wasn't it? But with, exactly. a, with quite a different Yeah, they play their new sound. album. And um, in the first half, yes. most of that's the reason. Yes. And then the second half is the sort of greatest hit, as you, yeah. as you say. But with a huge production value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you go back and you listen to Dark Side of the Moon and Animals and The Wall and stuff, the production's quite different on those albums. Roger Waters is a very different singer to David mm. Gilmore. So it's a, but it's, you know, it's magical. And then, of course, you go, and then there's like, five albums or something before that might even be more and, yeah, yeah. and this is where you know lee's expertise will come in and then i think that's where a lot of fans go whoa this is like <laughs> yeah, you yeah, know yeah, yeah. it goes well i say it goes it starts super psychedelic yeah and with a different yeah. guitar player yeah, yeah. um so, yeah and songwriter yeah, yeah now lee is the guitar player in nick mason's saucer full of secrets which is, um, you know, Nick's kind of touring current band. Mm. Uh, it's not a tribute band, but it's, it's, it's doing that early, yeah, yeah. very early thing. And it was, I think it was your idea, wasn't it? Yeah, to sort yeah, of pull all that right, together. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. look, welcome to Anderson's. Thank you. Uh, we're going to have some fun with looking at this brilliant guitar and, and a new <laughs> pedal. Um, but tell me about your, you know, because you had a, career as a guitar player prior to all yeah, this as yeah, well. Yeah, so give, it, yeah. give us a bit of background well, about you. Yeah, well, um, well, my main thing musically was that I played in the Blockheads, which mm -hmm. was uh, Ian Dury's band. Yeah. Uh, Ian passed away in 2002. I knew Norman, the bass player, and he's a phenomenal bass player. Yeah. And um, he told me they were going to carry on, but they weren't sure exactly how to do it and what they were going to do. Maybe they'd chant the the choruses of the songs because they didn't have a singer. Anyway, like, cut long story short, I jumped on board, learned how to be the webmaster of a website and took pictures at their gigs and turn up and started collecting the money at the gigs and then paying them and then telling them what songs they should play and all that kind of stuff. And then, then they realised actually that I could play guitar and I had been playing guitar before that, but never really sort of, you know, I'd sort of supported Robert Plant and you know, some cool things. Yeah. But I wasn't really making a lot of money doing it and I had yeah. to go off and get another job. So this came along and I thought, actually, this is a really interesting job. And I jumped on board and I did that for about 12 years. And, you know, we went from sort of playing to, you know, 150 people in a, you know, back end of a back, back room of a pub to playing, you know, to 20,000 people at a festival. Um, and eventually I just had enough of going up and down the motorways of England and... Um, which is funny because I've just been doing that, but <laughs> but uh, but um, you know that sort of that's what happened. And then I moved to France with my wife to renovate a house that we bought into a, sort of a holiday rental. And um, whilst I was doing that and not playing guitar, Guy Pratt, who's a really good friend of mine, came over and play, he was playing with David. And I went to see them playing. Realised how much I miss playing guitar. Started buying pedals. You'll be pleased to know <laughs> some for Anderton's, and uh, and um, um, sort of for a year, like everyone else, just was playing in my bedroom, you know, and sort of playing all this old stuff that I'd learnt years ago, years ago again. And then another year went by, and then they came back, and I went to see them. And this time they were in an amphitheatre in a place called Nîmes, and 
I went to watch that gig with my dad, who'd actually, it's a funny story, but my dad had actually been the cinematographer for Pink Floyd on the video for High Hopes, which wow. is on the division belt. So there's a Floyd connection <laughs> there. Um, so I was watching this and really selfishly just thinking, how can I play Pink Floyd music with Guy? And thinking he's not going to want to play all the stuff he plays with David. So my next thought was Pompeii, because I was in this amphitheatre. So I had lots of thoughts going on. And I was thinking, well, he doesn't play any of that stuff. And then I thought of Nick, because I thought if we got Nick, then it's the rhythm section of Pink, the, you know, the latter day rhythm section of Pink yeah. Floyd. So I went to Guy with the idea, saying like we could focus on the early stuff. He said, it's a really good idea, but he won't go for it. I went off for a month, <laughs> couldn't get the idea out of my head, went back, said, I really want to get the idea to him, how do I do it? And he said, um, write it out properly and I'll get it to him. And he did and here we are. That's, yeah. I mean, that's, I, the, I, that's, I, that's, the, that's the short That's the abbreviated yeah, version, yeah, yeah. but I mean, it's, it's okay, so let's, let's talk about, you know, in your opinion, because mm. I, you, you know, I, I, I've been there mm. into the weird stuff, didn't really connect and kind of didn't go back sure. other than this morning on the way to work because yeah, I knew yeah. we were doing this video and yeah. to sort of go, do I still, do I still not really connect with it? And it, I don't think and it's, you don't. well, I, <laughs> I don't yeah. doing the school run in a car. Yeah, sure, I think sure. where yeah. I, I kind of feel there's a certain yeah. state of mind that I would have to be in yeah. possibly, you know, <laughs> substance Sugar induced cube, maybe yeah. or something, uh, yeah. <laughs> where maybe I would. Yeah. But I was listening to it this morning and I, and I, and it's, I mean, I was saying to you, this, this is kind of crazy. And we, we, Lee and I were talking before the camera started running. I was going, if there's, I can hear this Beatles yeah. psychedelic mm. uh, sound mm. in some of this uh, Pink Floyd music. And then will you tell me the, you, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, well, when, when the Beatles were recording Sgt. Pepper, at Abbey Road, uh, the Floyd were next door, uh, mm. recording Piper at the Gates of Dawn. So, you know, it's all intertwined, you yeah. know, and they knew each other. I mean, like, you know, I think, um, you know, Gilmore wasn't in the band then, but, you know, they're still all, you know, he's still friendly with McCartney. He plays on his stuff every now and then. So they go back a long way. But yeah, that was, that was sort of prime psychedelic era yeah. and they were all around at the same time. And, you know, I suppose all the, you know, the white coat technicians at Abbey Road were, you know, working, on the same thing. So, you know, there's probably a lot of um, influence, you know. Well, so let's get into that. So original lineup of Pink Floyd mm. is uh, is not the guitar player that no. you know, most of you will be familiar with, although I expect, you know. I think if anyone's seen what this video is, I'm sure there'll be lots. Yeah, I was gonna say, you, you, you know, most people will know that, <laughs> yeah. that Sid Barrett yeah. was the original guitar player yeah, yeah. In, in Pink Floyd. Yeah, yeah. Um, Tell me a bit about Sid, because he wasn't in the band very long. It's no. quite a tragic sort of story. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and, and I don't know that he necessarily gets the credit that perhaps he deserves. Yeah, well, but I mean, without, without him, there wouldn't be a Pink Floyd, basically. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, it was the original lineup, the first, the first you know, incarnation is, is... Well, actually, there was another incarnation before, but they didn't really record anything. I think they recorded some demos. But the one that people think of as the first lineup is Richard Wright on keyboards, Nick Mason on drums, Roger Waters on bass, and Sid Barrett on vocals and guitar. And Sid was the primary songwriter. Mm. So um, he was around, for, well, I think Piper came out at the start of 1967, Piper at the Gates of Dawn. And he left about, I think it's something like 14 months later. So it wasn't a long time that he was there. Um, and he, his, when his his departure was, you know, pretty sad. I mean, he, 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 you know, people think of it as an acid casualty, really. I mean, that's probably at the root of it. Mm. Um, however, you know, I, I have a friend who, who had never told me before that his, he was actually Sid's cousin. And I only found this out about six months ago. Right. And he came to the Albert Hall to see us a few weeks back and... You know, Sid was perfectly capable of having a conversation in later years. He wasn't some, you know, mad recluse. You know, he he was he just he just shied away from mm. from public eye. Um, yeah, you know, he obviously had some 
he had mental health issues, mm. but he wasn't do lally, you know. Yeah. But when he left Pink Floyd, yeah, I mean, no one really, people didn't speak about mental health, mm. you know. So, um, what, what was the, um, if if you know, because the, by the time the um, source of the second album, Source of mm. the Secrets, he's still on that, isn't he? But yeah, with, he's, but he's, with David Gilmour as well. He's on. Well, there's the, I think the closing track is a song called Jug Band Blues, which mm. is a Sid song. Uh, and he's supposedly on set the controls for the heart of the sun. He actually did use to, he he did play that with them live, mm. and there's you know bootleg evidence of it. Um, but it's very difficult to decipher what he's doing on that if he is. And actually, some of the Floyd don't even remember or know. I mean, I don't think any of them know what he's doing on it. Um, <laughs> so it's it's difficult to know. There's nothing that's blindingly obvious that it's him on it and there's actually nothing blindingly obvious that's david on it either so yeah it's a difficult one it, it's funny you said it because we, we were uh, it was quite interesting talking to you before <clears> this video I, I my perception of what i thought you were going to to say when we when we first met was i love all that early pink floyd stuff mm. and and you know and that was the driving force for doing it but mm. actually you're probably more like me on that front in that you um you know the the, the you 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 like the later well the, the, yeah, the bit I mean, that, that came that, next yeah, but, that's what, but the opportunity to play and the yeah. idea was you know was to go and do the early stuff yeah yeah but so let and and I think we both agreed that until you know those you know until probably medal for me is the first yeah. Album where you start yeah. to hear where they David start to Gilmore, sound like Pink Floyd. Yeah, and you, know, you start to go, oh yeah, yeah I want that's yeah. a guitar player now who's going to change the world. Yeah, exactly. You start hearing that kind of thing that's going to go on to write the guitar solos from you know comfortably numb and absolutely all yeah you know but money and yeah prior yeah. to that it's for me it's the best word I think I can use for it is it's just it's quite psychedelic interesting soundscapes you know it's it's yeah. It's um, interesting compositions of experimental guitar or just uh, general you know, music. Also the beginnings of prog as well. Yeah. Because you've got like Atom Heart Mother, which is a really long piece that, you yes. know, has got like choir on it and cellos yes. and, you know. and But an album's with you know, three songs on them, you know, just like... Exactly, yeah. yeah. Well, like, you know, metal side two is Echoes. I mean, that's, it's the whole of side two, yeah. you know. Uh, um, but look, so let's... Let's put this. What was the challenge then? So you're 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 going. Wow, I can't believe Nick Mason has agreed to do this. <laughs> We're going to put this band together. Uh, you've got Guy Pratt, phenomenal bass player that obviously you know Floyd fans will know has toured with Floyd for years and years and years. Um, the, yeah, the yeah. drummer. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you you're playing guitar, and yeah. then how did you get? You have you have well, another reasonably well known. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Band. Well, so so at our initial meeting, um, um, it, it's a funny one because Guy is the sort of common bond in the band. He's a common thread. So everyone in the band knows Guy really well, but didn't necessarily know each other. I mean, mm. I I Gary Kemp. Um, that's plays, who we're talking about. That, yeah, and he, Gary plays guitar with me. You know, we're sort of, we're, I don't know, we're not rhythm or lead guitarists. We're just the guitarist in the mm. band, you know. And we both sort of have, you know, I mean, he sings a lot, so I probably mm. do some of the more intricate things that mm. you can't do when he's singing. But, um, you know, we both play almost an equal amount of solos and stuff. So he... Is he a Floyd fan? Yeah, I mean, it's funny because Gary actually is a really big Pog fan. And you, you just, people just don't think that because when they think of roman new romantics, they think of clothes, mm. you know. But, we've, but had, um, we've had this conversation, we were having the conversation with, um, oh, often about that period in the 80s where, you know, how much more sophisticated those pop bands were that yeah. we maybe gave them credit yeah, for. Yeah, at the years the time, later, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, yeah. But yes, I mean, so anyway, so we, yes, Gary Kemp of Spandau Ballet Sp yeah, yeah, and, yeah. you know, famous acting and all that other stuff. So he's in the band. Yep. And, the, and, Keys, and, is, and Keys is uh, Don Beacon, who used to play, and I think well, I might, probably still does work with, with Alex, Dr. Alex Patterson from The Orb. Um, yeah. And <laughs> uh, high frequency bandwidth, which is, I think there's also another thing called. Transit Kings, and one of those is a band that he was in with Alex Patterson and Guy. Right. Um, so, um, so yeah, I mean, really, the, it came about Gary being in it was actually Nick, uh, and it was funny because Guy and Gary are 
best friends. Mm. But it wasn't Guy put Gary forward, it was Nick. He said, I'd really like Gary to be involved. And Guy put Dom forward. And then and that, when we had the initial meeting, we've never gone, we've never strayed from those people. It's always been us five. And we get on really well. You know, people always, it's a talking point. People always go on about how, you know, we're always smiling and laughing on stage and stuff. And it's, it's weird for people to see Pink Floyd music being played by people being happy. <laughs> sort of fun, yeah. fun uh, Floyd, you know, but... Um, I was, I, I realised I've digressed slightly from where we were about to go five minutes ago. There's a, 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 a Gary Kemp detour. Yeah. But I was interested in um, how you approached trying to put uh, <clears throat> Sid Barrett's guitar sound together. And yeah. I was honestly thinking you were going to turn up today with a pedal board the size of a door and go, it's this. And then, and then you turned out with no pedal board, this cool guitar. And I was a bit like, well, what, you know, we, we, we need to try and do something. So I'm thinking next, you're going to go, yeah, well, we'll have that one and that one and that one and that one and that one. <laughs> and you've like, well, no, I just, I want this new Thorpey pedal, which we'll talk about in yeah, a minute. Yeah. And if, have you got a booner? It's like, yes, that's it. Well, that's kind of all he used. So yeah. I, I'm really surprised about yeah. that. So some of those big soundscapes, maybe I'm hearing more of the Richard Wright influence and yeah, engineers. Yeah, I mean, and... I mean, I have got a pedal board as big as a door, but <laughs> um, but again, I mean, the, the reason to have that is because there are well, I can't stand changing knobs in the middle of songs and all yeah. that kind of stuff. So I might have like four. I mean, on the well, on the first pedal board, I, had, I think I had about eight pedals, eight yeah. distortions, but they were all at different levels of distortion for different songs. There yeah. might only ever be like two or three pedals on at one time. And with, with the pedal that we've got here, the, the Thorby pedal, um, that's, all, that's all I really need. And, and, and then sometimes I don't even use Echo on it, you know. But. Well, so let's, let's do, we're gonna, we're gonna, I'll do the guitar last. I mean, I'm, yeah, sure, I'm sure, sure everyone's going, what is that? It's super cool. Um, so tell me about the, uh, the, the amp that Sid Barrett used is, mm. is no longer available. No, so no, t- you, tell us yeah. about that. So it, that, that was a, it's called a Selma treble and bass. And, um, that's what he went into and that's what gives you the sound uh, when we were first out and we did about you know over 70 shows i had a really good pedal and um i was really happy with it but it just didn't I, it didn't quite nail it you know and it mm. was it was it just sounded like a sort of default 60s sound mm-hmm. if you know what i mean and um i found a guy on on youtube called jed tyler who's a guitar player in a, in a Canadian band called Julie's Andrews, not Julie, just Julie's Andrews. And he, he did, he plugged into a um, Selma treble and bass and, and he did Interstellar Overdrive, which is like the big you know, riff of, of, of the early Floyd years. And it was exact. Right. But I didn't know what, you know, I thought, is, is that a Selma? And I actually contacted him and he said, it's my Selma. So that's when I thought, well, I've really got to try and get one. And I suddenly thought, well, Taking a you know what sixty year old amp out on the road, I don't think my tech's going to be very happy. Mm. You know, going from you know we'd just been on a summer tour, and I'd had a germanium fuzz face pack up. Yeah. You know, and then you realise why David probably doesn't use all that stuff anymore. So I thought, well, I'm not going to do that. And I thought, well, I need to find if there's an emu- an, uh, you know a simulation of it anywhere, mm. and there isn't. Mm. And um, so I approached Adrian Thorpe, and he was actually like. I think it was a challenge for him, and I think that's why he went. Yeah, I think I could do this, and he, um, his uh, um, partner, not like that. But, yes, his uh, business partner. His business partner, uh, Dan Coggins, actually has this, exactly the same amp. Oh, cool! So they were able to kind of reverse engineer it, as it were, into a pedal, and they really did. I mean, I went round to to test the prototype out, and. I'm not just saying this, you know, well, I mean, it was, I mean, the, the only difference was the amp had more hum on it. Right. You know, when it was loud, yeah. like we had, yeah. well, not more, I mean, it had hum on it and, mm. you know, and buzz and the pedal didn't. And, you know, it really, there's not a tube in it, but it obviously goes into my tube amp, but it's, it sounds tubey. It's, it's probably you know. the most, it's probably the most iconic amp brand of that era that's never been reissued. Resurrected or whatever, yeah. I mean, I was yeah. saying to Lee, uh, yeah. three or four years ago, I was, I was at a, <laughs> a music industry awards thing and where you're all sat on tables with lots of people you don't know terribly well. And I'm sat on the same table as the, if he was like the managing director or the sales and marketing director of Selma. Yeah. Um, <laughs> who had no and, idea. And, and, I, and <laughs> who are still a massive manufacturer of, you know, um, brass woodwind 
sort of instruments and maybe other stuff but it's not stuff that Anderson sells but yeah. I, I did say like I can't believe that you guys you know don't redo the, the, the amp brand like that and he looked at me as if like you know what did, did we make amps once you know it's just like wow you know it's like it's such a missed opportunity so you know Selma if you're watching come on uh, I mean I, maybe it's more complicated than that because I know I sometimes wonder if you know Selma's was a was a store on mm. Oxford Street wasn't it I think yeah, in the 60s was, in, yeah. in, in, in London and half of me wonders whether or not you know the amps were made by the store because in those days that's kind of how Marshall and Orange started. It was just like yeah, you know, a shop owner. I've, I've also heard amps. that the the amps themselves are very similar to original high watts like Sound City. Yeah. And I don't I don't know. Are I they should just do. rebadged. Then well, they might well, be rebadged mm. or whether like Dave Reeves from Sound City maybe he work for them or, or someone maybe, at South yeah. City with maybe him there's them, a, I don't know. Maybe it's you know. complicated. Maybe Selma, the saxophone people, don't own There'll the be probably to, I'm sure there'll but, be comments under this video telling us how stupid we are. Well, there'll be, as but, um, always, people yeah. <laughs> substantially more informed than me yeah. watching these videos. Yeah. So, okay, so let's have a, a little listen. In fact, if we, I mean, we've plugged you into the, our Victory V140, sure. which is our sort of stock 100-watt clean sounding yeah, yeah, yeah. amplifier. Sure. Um, and it's not... It's very different sound to that, but this isn't really a conventional overdrive as such, is it? It is trying to change. It's trying to. It's trying to, but it's emulating an amp. I suppose that the you know the, the thing that's most closest to are the, is it origin? Effects origin effects. The, yeah, yeah the, the origin effects. I should know that because I've got some of them. But that's it's it's a sim very similar yeah. thing. Yeah. But um, but there's no reason why you can't use and it as a distortion pedal. Do you yeah. use it into the front end of another amp? Yes, or exactly. I so use a, I use a, a high tone amp, which is basically a, you know, it's basically like an old high watt. Yeah. Um, and that's made in in uh, in the states. Um, yeah. And that's what I use along with their um, a copy of uh, old Fane Crescendo speakers, and I just use it into that. So let's let's have a little yeah. like without and with. So yeah. if you just get this is our you know most people will probably go yeah I can get my amp to sound roughly like that on a clean yeah, setting yeah, sort yeah. of thing. Well, the, well the clean this is my clean sound yeah. right. So that's the clean sound, yeah. and then with the Scarlet tuning on, and if you're going to play you know actually I was saying Interstellar Overdrive that would be. Uh, <coughs> So you can hear the glassiest. It's know, adding up. It's adding that killer. Yeah, much brighter than the amp naturally wants yeah. to be, with that quite hard to capture sort of fuzzy, farty, broken bottom end yeah. element yeah. of it. So it's it's not a traditional smooth sounding overdrive. No, no, no. I mean like the, the whole. Um... That's yeah. It just sounds like an old. It sounds like an old amp, which is what I wanted. It's know. very cool. And if yeah. you stick the, the booner on as well, yeah. Um, you know. I mean, probably put a bit more volume on there, and it, you know, you get that. Yeah, you know, it's all that. And you, you were saying as well that, that one of the things that's um, quite nice about so, the Source of Full of Secrets band is that there aren't that many massively iconic guitar solos no. from the records. Yeah. And so you, there's a little bit of license to play the stuff just how you and Gary want to play it. <clears throat> I think the reason I want, I know, actually, the reason I went wanted to get this made was because I suppose that. I, I was I'm treating Sid sound as the one that I wanted to get right, even though we know we say we're not a tribute band. Just, I wanted to get as close to his sound because he made a couple of solo albums after this, but they weren't the, the guitar work wasn't like this stuff with all the freak out, um, inverted commas freak out, you know, sort of stuff. Um, but David's guitar sounds. <clears throat> aren't really there like as you say until 
echoes really i mean you know that's when he's i mean he's you know he's 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 coming to the band he came into the band to emulate sid and you know his i think it would be fair to say that his guitar style was born out of sid's especially with the echo use of echo um i i think he was using De uh, sid's gear when he first joined you know so he hasn't really i mean i've said this before in you know rolling stone so it's, i'm not being rude you know yeah. but you know he's he's not he hasn't He's learning how to play guitar, mm. you know. He hasn't, he hasn't, or he, at least he's learning how to play guitar like him. Mm. He hasn't developed his style yet, and consequently, there isn't. There are little bits on some of the songs that you, if you listen to them a lot, you you know that phrase. Mm. But there aren't really any, you know, solos that jump out at you like mm. his later ones do. Mm. And also, I mean, sort of just to free associate a little bit, it's why it works for Nick to do this because because they were a lot more experimental certainly live I mean they were really experimental live in those days Nick had a lot more chance to change rhythms and do different things in songs whereas once David had learnt how to be the guitar player we know and love he was essentially still like Nick Mason but keeping a beat while there was an amazing guitar solo going right. on you know yeah 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 um yeah, I sort of jumped off a bit there. No, but, you know, I, I, it's interesting you say that. Yeah. Well, so tell us about the, I mean, interesting. So so not only was the Source of Full of Secrets band your idea, but mm. you, you approached Adrian Thorpe to try and make this pedal. Yeah. Um, so what, and, and there's quite a lot of knobs and buttons on it. Uh, I was worried you were going to ask me about that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and in, and in, <laughs> in true <laughs> Thorpey style, they are, they're, they're always hard to um, kind of see what they say underneath. The yeah, 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 no, no, no. It's, no, it's not that. It's, it, there's, it, what he's done is he's actually, um, he's put everything that's on the amp on the pedal. Right. Um, for my purpose, I've, I've just got, there are, there are three switches down here, which, you know what, I can't even... <laughs> With my 50-year-old eyesight, I can't even see what they say. Bright, bright, I think it's bias and deep, I think it says. I just have them full down. They're probably there to help you with whatever amp you've got. Yeah. You know, if you've got a dark amp or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, but you've got, you've got, you know, you've got treble, bass, presence, gain and master. Yeah. Um, where, just, where have you got, because we were, I said when I'd had a little fiddle with this before. Yeah. Um, I didn't, really find I was using it as a conventional overdrive pedal. Yeah, you know, yeah. I was I was a bit like I think what you've done there. You, there's a there's quite a dynamic sound. I'm sure there's quite a lot in in the way you can just roll off the volume to clean up and stuff like that. Although I don't do enough that, but there is. Right. Um I mean I I keep mine set quite um bass is quite low. In fact I've just I've just changed it just now but it's like um um I mean, it's really on the on the original records, the Sid stuff. It's it's quite thin sounding. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't always translate great when you're playing live with mm. you know all, all the all the fellas. That, but but um, that was really common though. In that all yeah, the guitar yeah, yeah. players, all the guitar players went for this very bright jangly sound. Yeah. I've, I've read you know some of it is to do with the recording equipment that was used and yeah. you know the. You, could, you had to be careful about how much bottom end was also, in there. Also, I think, um, you know, I, mean, I, I asked Nick a while back, you know, like, did Sid have a lot a lot of time to, you know, get his sounds, you know, and, and you know, with a delay, with a delay with the uh, Benson, you know, things mm. like that. And his answer was no, because, <laughs> um, you know, if he did, then Norman Smith, who was producing, or Joe Boyd, would be like, we haven't got time. We got to record, you know. So, they, so literally, I mean, which is even more crazy because you think what well, the sounds he got mm. was probably just off the cuff, you know. And he was obviously very, he was obviously really good with a boot, you know, with a not with a boot, with a Benson, you know. I mean, that's, some of the stuff there is great. I mean, but I mean, um, what's that? I mean, actually, I just think I've taken a bit of bass off just mm -hmm. to get it a bit more like that, but. It's, It's 
better. That's that's a bit more thin, a bit more yeah. like how he was. But I can, you know, again, yeah. just from playing half an hour's worth of those tracks this morning on the on the way in, I can I can hear it. You know, yeah, I, yeah. I can I think it's the well good. Yeah, I guess that's <laughs> yeah, the whole point. Yeah, but yeah, but, yeah. but you know, relatively simplistically, you know, yeah, you're, yeah, you're obviously yeah, playing the yeah. you know the right the right riffs into a couple of pedals. Yeah. Off we go. Yeah, yeah. I, lo I love the you know, I love that you know that, that that is the there wasn't weeks and weeks of Sid trying to get a sound in a studio yeah, because it be, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah and I bet you there there's probably loads of bands you know apart from probably the Beatles and the Stones at that time I bet most of the music was about going come on yeah you yeah. know there's another band in here yeah, in yeah. half an hour let's get this track yeah. down it'll be like um, also like why you listen to some of those old things and by you know different bands and mm. A guitar might be slightly out of tune, you know, or whatever. You know, they just they got to get on with it, you know. Love, um, it, love it. Well, look, we can't really not talk about the guitar now. I mean, the the, the uh, yeah. Boona, uh, just just so you guys are aware, if, if, if so, this is called a scarlet scarlet. It's tunic, called a sorry. scarlet tunic, and it's actually called a scarlet tunic because um, there is a Pink Floyd song on Piper Against the Dawn called. The gnome, and uh, yeah, exactly. Of course, there is. Yeah. You know, and, and, and the um, gnome's wearing a. Scarlet and the no the, tunic. he wore a scarlet tunic, <laughs> and and um, and of course, the scarlet tunic also fits in with Adrian's military theme as well. So that's why that's why it's called that. Um, but um, what I what I'd also say is that it's actually really you know it's not a one trick pony. I and mean, mm. I think. I mean, you know, from what you've been saying, I mean, I think it's probably quite obvious. It doesn't, it doesn't sound like any other pedal. Mm. And I think it's a really cool, it's another good flavour to have, mm. you know, on your board if you want to go for that, for a different 60s sound that isn't really there. Well, so yeah. Pete and I will do another video of this at some point in, in the next few weeks. Cool. But it is, a, it's available, I think, to, to, to pre-order or, or buy at the moment. And it will just become part of the Thorpey lineup. So I don't, I don't think it's a limited thing or anything like that. No, I don't think so, no. Uh, the Boona, uh, my goodness, you know, that's been around for years. It's, it's you know, David Gilmore uses the yeah. pedal as far as I'm aware. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's the, you know, uh, it's a Croatian company, isn't it? Yeah. Dawn of Prince. But yeah. we've, we've stocked those for years. There'll be dozens of other videos of those online. Um, but this. This, yeah. This is, uh, when you first, the closest I've seen to something like that was the um, Jimmy Page. Yes, yeah. Uh, Dragon, is it? Or yeah, well, it, was, oh. it was the one that came out with the dragon, the I think, was it, wasn't it? Was it, it the was, dragon the amp? I can't remember. The dragon, there was a Telecaster that was natural with a dragon painted on it. Oh, and right. it was yeah. sold as a set with a white telly that had those mirrored that, the white telly had, that's discs right. on yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was yeah. the same, anyway, yeah. and that sort of reminded me. But this, you know, presumably is before that. Well, well the, um, what this is, is it's actually, the, so Pink Floyd have a, a touring exhibition that goes around the world. It's been at the VNA mm -hmm. a few years back. I think it's in America at the moment, or about to be somewhere in America. And they have a lot of. Well, I think they have all the stuff from their warehouse that that's of interest. Mm -hmm. They don't have Sid Barrett's original Esquire. No one knows where it is. I mean, it, it, obviously, it was. It was. Um, this is a replica of it, and. Um, he, he, yeah, I think he had basically done something with his blonde Esquire, put mirror, put whatever it is. I don't know what it is. It's not Baco for, but you know, something like right, that. Right. Okay. And and he he'd done it, and then I think I, as the year went on, and he was playing it, it became you know scuffed, and it was you know loads of scratches in it, and the, these came off, and then it just was blonde, and no one, I don't think anyone knows where where the original one is, but um, Phil Taylor, who is David Gilmore's tech. But, you know, the actual head of backline for Pink Floyd and has been for, well, probably like, must be like nearly 50 years now. Um, he made a replica for this exhibition. And when I came back from my North American, our North American tour, uh, got into our dressing room in Cambridge and there were some guitars there that Nick had bought as presents for us. For doing the American tour, um, which is exactly what Nick's like, and um, and um, 
And in one of those cases was this. And Phil had made one for me and one for Gary. And so I consequently, I used it uh, that night in Cambridge and I used it on the Live at the Roundhouse film that we made as well. Mm. Um, and then I, I haven't used it because of COVID for a long time. But I thought it'd be apt to bring it along today. And so it's very cool. Here it is. Yeah. Well, if, you, if you've got a, a slightly beaten up version looking of this thing in your loft somewhere, they're going, it's been there for a year. Like, never yeah. de- you know, it might maybe, be worth a bit of money. Yes, yeah, yeah. Maybe you've got Sid's <laughs> yeah. original old Esquire. Wouldn't that be cool if that turned up? Yeah. yeah uh, but be, that's yeah. very cool. And, but in fairness, um, you were saying as well, it's essentially he's taken a. Um, it's, a, a Mexican, it's, it's a Mexican telly, you know, it's got the. Mexico, made in Mexico on the back. Yeah, and it's he's got a number three. So I think I've either got, I think maybe Gary's got number two and I've got number three, or maybe there were two made for the museum for, for the exhibition. Yeah. I don't know, but but that's very. Yeah. But um, yeah. I quite kind of love this as well because it, this was there was a time, wasn't there, where maybe it's still. I think it still does happen now, isn't it? But you, you know, people should take their guitars and to make them your own you know yeah 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 and yeah. to it and yeah, then you know if yeah. you if you become super famous like sid obviously did yeah then all of a sudden it's an iconic that's very cool very <laughs> cool looking thing well look um appreciate you coming along today no, thanks for having me. um source of full of secrets if you guys want to find them you they're just about to embark on the european leg of yeah, uh, their exactly, tour yeah. so oh, yeah. links below you might be able to catch them there is there um recorded music that people can yeah, yeah, yeah. It? Saying we we uh, so we made a film of our roundhouse show in 2019, and that's obviously on vinyl and CD. Mm-hmm. That came out about September 20. So I think it was um, number five on the charts, whatever that means nowadays. You know, <laughs> uh, you know, number one, you know, DVD and etc. Et so yeah, that's all out there and on you know all the streaming platforms, all that sort of stuff. Well, and you know, if you're watching this video and you've managed to get to the end and you're thinking, I've never really heard of Pink Floyd. <laughs> please just <laughs> listen to it listen to it all uh it'll change your life some something that they've written i'm sure will change you know will blow your mind um but thank you so much for coming in no, thank it's you. been a pleasure thanks lee all right thank you guys for watching and we shall see you in another video soon au revoir